All right, so if you watch part one of this video, in part one, we took a HP Z240, and in that video, I showed you everything that you needed to know to get this computer ready for a case swap. That's right, everything. I showed you how to do the front power button, the LEDs, the front I.O. so you have no errors, and not only that, how to make sure that when you transfer it to a new case, that the new case is able to use the front I.O.s to include the audio and all that stuff. And guys, it was real easy, it was real simple, and I probably paid about $20 in just little miscellaneous pieces just to make this happen. So now, if you're watching this, in this video, I'm gonna show you taking everything that we learned and I showed you and pop it into a case like this. So, let's get started. So what inspired this video series is the fact that I build a lot of budget computers. We take office PCs and we put them into better cases and we make cool custom gaming computers. And the bang for the buck that you get for these is definitely worth it. So I was scouring the eBay, doing the whole typing thing, and I found something very interesting. The Dell Optiplexes is typically what everyone's go-to is. And the Optiplexes, although they are great, they're awesome, they're going for about, and all my information is mostly coming from eBay, $100. And yeah. And for $100, you get an i5, third gen, fourth gen. You might get a, um, a hard disk drive, usually about 500 gig or a terabyte. And it usually comes with 8 gigs of RAM, which is not too bad. But then by the time you're said and done, you're probably into it about four or $500 for the case swap. You have to buy these special little adapters, which are about $20, $30 from, um, uh, you can get them on eBay from Harbor, Harbin Freight or something like that. And yeah. So you're into a $500 for your build to include graphics card and everything, but you're only running an i5, third gen, and fourth gen. So now the issue that you run into is that a lot of games that are coming out, third gen and fourth gen is really becoming the minimum requirements. So let me take a look at a few games over here, for example. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Fortnite, Flight Sim, and Cyberpunk. Like Cyberpunk, i5 third gen, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, i3 third gen, Fortnite is saying i3 third gen, and Flight Simulator is i5 fourth gen. So now you're paying $500 for a computer just to do that whole case swap by the time you're all said and done, and you're at minimum specs for games that are coming out. And then as new games come out, well, kind of sucks, don't it? But looking on the interweb the HP Z240 goes for the same price and you can find these for about a hundred dollars and this is eBay price and probably a lot cheaper if you check social media platforms for a hundred dollars and you're getting sixth gen seventh gen performance DDR4 and a lot more so let's talk about this so this uh, computers is the HP Z240 and this is the one that we're referring to I'm sure there are other models that might apply so just do some research on that this is going for about a hundred bucks and I paid 80 for this one primarily because it was an i3 6100 but it comes with a one terabyte so, uh, one terabyte hard drive and it came with eight gigs of RAM and I'm only into this for 80 bucks when the Dell Optiplex is about a hundred bucks and maybe you get an i5 third gen or if you spend hundred and forty dollars you get an i7 third gen but it goes up but eighty dollars for this and now you're way above minimum spec so definitely something to consider so now for this build, we want to get some good bang for the buck performance and we're going to show you what we were able to come up with. So our case fans are going to be these GIM case fans, which are awesome. I love the way they look. They're all white. We're going to be changing the CPU cooler just to get some more RGB goodness. The Cooler Master i71C, love these things. They're like $20 on the old Amazon. They work great. We got the one terabyte that's coming out of that computer that we're using over there from the Z240. We got a 240 disk solid state drive. 16 gigs of DDR4, I believe this is 2100, 2133 memory, which will work fine for it. We could always get something a little faster later. We have our adapters, which we paid like $20 for these adapters. This is the USB 3.1 that we needed to buy. And as if you see, it has the mod that we did so we could have our front USB 3.0 and also not have those annoying post errors. For our video card, I was able to snag up a 1050 Ti for about $150. Not terrible, not the best, but it will do and it'll definitely uh, get the job done for this build. And for our CPU, this is where we're gonna have, I think the most savings and this is the best kept secret, whether you're going Dell, Lenovo or anything, we got ourselves a Xeon. Now the Xeon flavor that we're using is the Intel Xeon 
E3 1245 V5. And let me talk about this specs and why this is definitely the way to go as far as price to performance in this build. So this one, this CPU and this combo, they're all back from 2005, so they're about six years old, but we're talking Intel 6th gen technology, which is a lot higher than minimum specs for a lot of these games that we're looking to play and get into. And I gotta say, I love these CPUs. This CPU, I was able to snag it up on the Facebook Marketplace for $60. Now, if we go back to the eBay, they're going for about $100 to $120. So if you get on that whole social media platform and you got somebody you can trust, guys, definitely uh, take advantage of that. But careful on the seller that you get. Some of them are a little <laughs> sketchy. So now compared to the i7, so this is equivalent to the i7-6700, this one runs at 3.5 gigahertz, 3.9 turbo boost, 80 watt TDP, supports up to 64 gigs of memory. Now, although $120, check this out. The i7-6700 runs at 3.4 gigahertz, boost up to four, uh, four gigahertz, which is a little faster, but this is, the i7-6700 is going for about $200 on eBay. Guys, we're talking about a $100 difference, and that's the difference between a better video card, more memory, more storage, but the performance difference between this and the i7-6700, guys, 3%. This is 3% slower at half the cost, which is ideally, it's negligible. I mean, it's really negligible, nothing that you're gonna do. What, you may be talking about a couple of frames per second, it might make the difference for you, but for the price, this is definitely the way to go. So now, we're gonna take all this, we're gonna pop it into that white case over here. We're gonna use everything that we talked about in part one of this video, so, Gotta watch it, gotta watch it. And I'm gonna show you how the HP Z240 is better bang for the buck compared to the Dell Optiplex. It's a lot easier to do the case swap and how much gaming performance that we could gain out of this. And then at the end, we'll talk about the cost and how much we were able to save going down this route. So let's go ahead, let's switch to the build montage and let's get to working. This build turned out pretty awesome, and there's a lot of things to talk about it. So we started off with this, and this is another one I have lying around, with the motherboard and all that fancy jazz and everything that they put in there, and you know, it's kind of small. You're limited on the type of video card that you can use on it, and just the upgradability path. But it's a solid platform, and has good bones to make a good gaming computer. So let's talk about it. We took this, and we put it into that. So, now to show you guys, does it work? Check it out. We got power LED. Here we go. No errors, and check this out. We're booted right into Windows, and if you look, we even got our hard drive or solid state drive LED going in. Awesome. And now, for the people that may be in doubt, check this out. USB 2.0, here we go. There we go. USB 3.0.
everything works perfect just like it should so let's talk about this build and a couple of things that you need to keep in mind so first off when you're doing this you need to be mindful of the usb 3.0 and here's why and i should have showed this better and i didn't learn this until i actually finished the build but the usb 3.0 is like right underneath the graphics card over here which is not the end of the world because the cable i was able to get actually was able to flex and allow me to sit the graphics card in there also if you look at the sata ports the sata ports down there yeah they're kind of sticking out a bit so if you're going to get a cooler it needs to be no more than a two slot cooler anything greater than that with a thick beefy cooler you are going to run into clearance issues with the sata ports and the usb 3.0 the front audio requires no modifications usb 2.0 we were able to modify it on this case just do the cut and splicing and you're good to go now let's say you want to get rid of this platform all you need to do is just uncut that and just splice the wires back together from the original case and you're done so now another thing too is when you boot up, you get you'll, you might get an error saying uh, chassis fan not found or whatever it's called like that. The fan right over here, if you see the fan connector, I don't know if it comes in the camera right over there, but you need to make sure that you have a fan plugged in. I went with this um, uh, GIM white fan combo, which I love these fans. They look great. And because of that, they only plug into the SATA ports, so you're not going to get a signal for there. So what I had to do to kind of overcome that is just add another fan over there, black or maybe just white. I just went with the black fan because these you can change to any color pattern, any color theme that you want. And by putting the black in there, we don't have to worry about it. And you really don't see that. So you can focus more on the colors that you want over here. So now performance, we went with the Xeon E3 V5 1245, clocked at 3.5, boost up to 3.9, and this thing runs phenomenal. So now the games that we chose, and I've always choose these games because I just find a good of past, present, and future, or just current, however you want to say it. And the frames per seconds that we got on this were actually pretty decent. So now our CPU on all games, so let's take Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we were at 1080p low settings, CPU just stayed at 55 to 50% 50 usage, of course our 1050 Ti, eh, honorable mention at best, but we were able to average 1080p, 50 frames per second, ran pretty good. Cyberpunk, same thing, S GPU 100%. But the CPU was only at 40% and we were able to get 1080p low settings, 30 frames per second. Fortnite 1080p, S CPU was at 50%, GPU was running about 90 to 95 and we were able to get 90 frames per second. So what does that tell us? That Number one, that tells us that this CPU and this combo over here has plenty of room for growth. So if we're able in the future to actually get a graphics card that's actually a lot better than this, we're not gonna run into bottlenecking issues and this CPU has a lot of beans to help keep up with more modern CPUs. I've actually seen guys throwing 3060s in this combo by doing some type of, uh, not modding, but I've seen guys throw 3060s in here and have great, fantastic performance. And this was way easier than the Dell Optiplex. A lot easier, a lot simpler, and yeah, just better bang for the buck. And finally, to kind of wrap this up, how much did we get into this compared to like doing an optiplex so like i talked about in the vid uh, the beginning of the video i could get optiplexes for about 80 to 100 going with the i5 third gen fourth gen shoot if you go 140 dollars you get an i7 uh third gen maybe a fourth gen i don't know but mostly you're going to get an i5 third fourth gen for about 100 to 120 dollars for a dell optiplex series this z240 we paid 80 dollars and looking on the ebay the current market value they're going for about a hundred dollars so now think about it i paid 80 dollars for this version it came with eight gigs of ram came with a one terabyte hard drive and it only had a i3 6100 so then from there, we upgraded the CPU, which I was able to get it on the marketplace for $60. A case for 50, power supply 50, got eight gigs more of DDR4, so we can have dual channel for $30, a solid state for $30, and a little miscellaneous stuff to kind of make sure everything works for about $30. And our GPU was about $150. Ugh, kind of missed the days where I was able to get better GPUs for that price, but it's okay. And we were into this for a grand total of $480 now my i3 6100 i sold it and i was into it 450 dollars. so 450 dollars, you're able to get a great gaming computer that has better 
upgrade path for newer hardware that's coming out now if graphics cards weren't so horrible in pricing over here we've actually would have been able if this was i would say before this whole pandemic thing i probably could have gotten an r9 380 or even an rx 570 for about 80 bucks cut 70 dollars off this price for it and i only would have been into this computer roughly 400 dollars and easily sold it for about maybe five six seven hundred dollars i don't know i can't forget what i would sell this for but ideally this is the way to go so guys if you're looking to get yourself a computer good bang for the buck easy modding or if you have access to any of these hp z40s 240s definitely go for it guys i love the optiplex that's what kind of helped started this channel and i'm a big optiplex fan but honestly hp z240 you got my heart and i think just like they kind of say in smash brother a new contender has entered the ring yeah, you've definitely entered the ring considering that you get 6th, 7th gen Intel for the price of a 3rd, 4th gen Optiplex. So, guys, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts. Z240, do you think this is the new way? This is the new mod? This is the new build? So much easier, so much cleaner. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.